Kuzuzangpo, I'm Ashok Tirwa. This is Radio on TV. This week, I'm joined by Sangi Chiltrim. Sangi is a bronze med- medalist, 48th Asian Bodybuilding Physics Sports Championship, which was held in Macau towards the end of August this year. Uh, first of all, Tash Delek, Sangi, and welcome to Radio on TV. So, tell us, for how many years you have been working out? Uh Kuzumbo to everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Bhutan Broadcasting Service uh, for inviting me here. Uh, well, uh, it's been uh, almost exactly uh, about uh, six years uh, uh, working uh, in the gym seriously. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I was in touch with, uh, with uh, uh, bodybuilding and fitness uh, since 2004. Uh, mm-hmm. But I seriously started working out in 2009. Uh, Mm-hmm. And that was after uh, uh, getting posted to Thimpul. Mm-hmm. Before that, I was uh, away from capital city. So mm-hmm. I you were in the army. Yes, la. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could not uh, get a proper gym. So uh, it was to, from 2009 mm-hmm. onwards. Now, since you, we know that you were in the army once, and then uh, how did that bod- the passion for bodybuilding came up came about? Plus, uh, actually. Uh, since my childhood days, la, after you know, like uh, like uh, uh, like uh, generally, all uh, all guys like when they are small boys, uh, they would, they like to have a very good body. Like they get fascinated seeing a muscular body. Okay. Same way, uh, when I was a child, uh, I watched this movie called uh, Commando, mm-hmm. where Arnold Schwarzenegger was the lead actor, la, and seeing his muscles. I was quite fascinated and I always mm-hmm. wanted to have muscles like him. Like. Mm-hmm. And also when I was a child, I used to be very skinny like. mm-hmm. and I always wanted to be big. So that was the main reason which inspired me to you know, uh, work out and, mm-hmm. uh, and get muscles. Like. Okay. Were you bullied as a child? Uh, well, I'm sure <laughs> like every child is bullied. Like. <laughs> Not only me, like <laughs> can be anyone. And I'm sure like... Uh, uh, not just me, like uh, I was also once or twice bullied, but not that much. La. But that was not the reason. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Good to know that. Then you had to choose between your work, work and then your passion for bodybuilding at one point of time. And you decided to go for bodybuilding. Uh, well, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I served in Royal Bhutan Army for about two years. La. And uh, after that, I got transferred to Royal Bodyguards. La. And in Royal Bodyguards, I served about five years. La. And uh, while I was in Royal Bodyguards, mm. I took this passion seriously la, mm. to work out. As I saw good facilities in Timbu, I saw good gyms, and then I joined Planet Gym. La. And then uh, it was quite t- t- tough for me la, to adjust between my work and my passion. And... Uh, for about like two championship, I was still serving like, in Royal Bodyguards, and I would like to thank uh, the president of Bhutan Olympic Committee, like, HRH Tashu Jigilu Gyeongchu, for giving me the platform and opportunity to take part in uh, my uh, first championship, like, which was in 2012, where I got fourth position. Like. Without his support, I would never have been able to uh, enter the championship. and. To be frank, I would never get this bronze medal. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, in 2013, I decided to uh, resign from my work because uh, I could not adjust. Mm. It so was it was demanding more. Of yes, la. like it was like if I give either I have to be a bodybuilder mm-hmm. or I have to be uh, uh, an army officer. La. Mm-hmm. And to adjust between two, I could not do both at a time like, because bodybuilding needs a lot of discipline, a mm-hmm. lot of discipline, and uh, it should be like the workout should be on time. You have to eat diet on time. Like. So I could not adjust <coughs> between these two. So I decided to resign and take bodybuilding just to fulfill uh, to fulfill my dream. And uh, the main reason I had to resign was not because I didn't want to serve. Like. I had to see the weightage like, between mm-hmm. these two. And in Bhutan, to be a professional, like, mm-hmm. anything, like, in sp- any, any sports, be it any sports, you cannot adjust between these two things. Like, and bodybuilding is quite demanding. We need a lot of time. And then so that's the main reason I had to quit. And 
I thought I would like pursue my dream like, mm-hmm. and pursue my goal. And this, the other interesting thing that I noted was when you were in the army, when you said that when you didn't have very good facilities when you were in the field. So those days also you used to work out and you used to have your own seats. Uh, that's true. Mm. Uh, what happened was uh, after completion from uh, after I completed my training from Indian Military Academy, oh. then I was uh, transferred to Wangdi and then to Samsila. So I decided to buy some equipment mm. just to keep myself fit. You know, like not fit like uh, just to maintain my muscles, like, which I uh, which I developed when I was in. Uh, Indian Military Academy and National Defense Academy. Mm. So I used to keep these sets wherever I go. Mm. Even after uh, after I came to Royal Bodyguards, la, when mm. I was on field duty, like Punakha, somewhere, mm. I, had to, I, had to, uh, I had to be there for a month. La. So I used to carry all my equipments at once there mm-hmm. and improvise my own bench, you know, la, to do mm. bench press and all. And that's how I used to work out. La. So being in the army, did it help you in any ways to achieve, to achieve what you have today? Well, to be uh, very honest, la, bodybuilding, you know, when we say determination, is not about our body, la, it's all about my mind, about mm-hmm. our mind. So being in the army, one thing I developed and which I'm very proud of is, you know, la, we became mentally strong la, mm-hmm. with our training. Mm-hmm. Three years in training in National Defense Academy is not just building your physical body, la, the muscles. Mm-hmm. It was all about developing your mental mm-hmm. you know, strength. La. And also after that, going for commandos for 40 days was really tough, which made mm-hmm. me mentally very strong mm-hmm. and which really helped me now mm-hmm. to pursue my bodybuilding, mm-hmm. where we need a lot of determination, especially mm-hmm. during my cutting phase, mm-hmm. where I have to cut down my carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. These, were, these are the times where I like remember my, my you know, my flashback mm-hmm. during my India days, which makes me really strong right now. Okay. Because earlier you told us that, you know, in a bodybuilding also you need discipline and army is about being disciplined. That's true. La. Mm. Bodybuilding, how, why is <coughs> discipline similar to army? La. In army you have to be very punctual. Time is very important in army. La. Same way in bodybuilding also time is very important. You have to eat on time. When you say discipline, it's about time. La. We have to eat six meals in a day, six to seven meals in a day, which we have to eat exactly two and a half to three hours time. La. So that's how like we ha- we, we need to adopt a very strict discipline. Mm-hmm. And uh, not only that, la, we need in a, uh, exact, like, enough rest. You cannot just say like, uh, you cannot uh, sleep for four hours and expect to lift heavy weights the next mm-hmm. day. La. So you need enough rest and... Uh, you need to eat on time. So these are all discipline. La. And mm-hmm. similar way in the army also, like I said, you have to be punctual everywhere. You have to dress up tidy and then you have to uh, wear your uniform neat and clean. These are all discipline. So I think it's like interrelated and connected. La. Now, the other thing is you have a song lined up for us called Wanted. Could you tell us about the song? And then if you have any dedication, this is the time. Let's, uh, this song... Uh, I chose it uh, especially for my wife, la, mm. who's been really supportive uh, for my for achieving my goal, for achieving uh, like fulfilling my dream. Without my wife, I would never uh, be able to uh, mm. get medal or be what I am right now. Mm. And then uh, she has always been there, no matter what. Mm. And uh, this is why I chose this song mm. to, uh, just to dedicate, dedicate to her. Just before we play the song, I just wanted to know what kind of support that a wife should give if somebody is into a bodybuilding, a professional bodybuilding? Less. Uh, you need a lot of uh, family support la, mm-hmm. in bodybuilding. Like, you cannot socialize much. Mm-hmm. You cannot give your full time to your uh, family. La. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where you need understanding from your wife or your family. Mm-hmm. You know, la. And that's how like she has always been there for me. She understood uh, why I didn't have time for them, you know. Like, mm-hmm. So that's how like uh, she had been supportive. So main thing is, when you are a professional bodybuilder, you have to go. You have to go. You have to work out. You have to rest enough. You have to eat on time. You cannot eat with your family, mm-hmm. and you cannot like leave town and go somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. for holiday. 
So these are the things we really need understanding and support mm-hmm. from your family. So this is the main reason. Okay, la. I do hope she is, she is listening to us right now. And uh, we are playing this song called Wanted by Hunter Hayes for the listening pleasure of Sangha Children's wife. The math and the logic of it. Welcome back. I'm in conversation with the bronze medalist of 48th Asian Bodybuilding Physics Sports Championship, Sangha Children. And uh, uh, Sangha, could you tell us what is this bodybuilding is all about? With, uh, well, uh, there are like two differences. Uh, there are differences between bodybuilding and fitness. Like. Bodybuilding is all about building up muscles. And if I talk about championship, like, how the judges judge is not only about big muscles you need to have good frame and good symmetry when you when a judge uh, look at a bodybuilder uh, they should be like uh, uh, they should be looking good mm-hmm. overall it's not like just like this sh- uh, it's not just being big mm-hmm. just being big is not enough la. and also your genetics uh, play a very big role in bodybuilding mm-hmm. So I I have heard people saying that you know bodybuilding is is an art as much as it is a sports. Let's uh, let's talk about championships. Oh. When we say bodybuilding, let's uh, it's like, let's say like it's, it's for championship. Mm. So in in a in a bodybuilding championship, what happens is uh, it's not like any other sports. Mm. Bodybuilding is like a pageant, mm. you know, like. Uh, like let's say Miss World or Miss Universe, mm-hmm. similar to that. Mm-hmm. Even in bodybuilding, like you have to go there, you have to show your muscles. And at the same time, there are like many judges, you know. And uh, maybe one judge might give you uh, 10 points, 10 out of 10. Another judge may give you eight. So it all depends on your like uh, presentation and also your symmetry and uh, your genetics, like I said mm-hmm. that time, mm-hmm. so it's an art. It's like, uh, let's say, like I said that time, Miss Buta- uh, like uh, Miss World or Miss Universe or mm-hmm. Mr. World or Mr. Universe, you know, you know it's like mm-hmm. similar to that. Mm-hmm. So that's how like, it's an art. It's not like exactly sports. Okay. It's a mixture of sports and also mm-hmm. a pageant. Then the other interesting thing is, uh, recently there were like four athletes who competed in Macau yes. and three of them got the medal. Yes. What do you have to say that? Is it because we're good or...? Well, or uh, I would like to say like Bhutan being a very small country like, and also mm. underdeveloped like, mm. and uh, is a developing country right now and uh, with the population of just 700,000 mm. competing in an Asian level like mm. this time like, and mm. getting three medals is a big achievement. Mm. There are other bigger countries, other developed countries mm with uh, 10 times uh, population of Bhutan la, and still they couldn't get even a single medal. Mm. So in a tally, I think a position, uh, when we tally a position, we are not in mm. the last mm. five. Okay. We so are above that. Okay, in your opinion, what went well? Well, uh, I think with time, bodybuilding, wa- uh, bodybuilding is uh, very different from other sports. Mm. In a short, like maybe a span of five years, like, you can get into professional if you really work hard. La. Mm. But like other sports like uh, basketball, athlete, athletic, and also tennis or be it any other outdoor or indoor sports, la, you really need to have a very good, uh, first of all, good genetics and also uh, good facilities. With bodybuilding, I feel we don't need that much facility if you are really into it. La. And to be frank, we need a little bit of monetary support. La. If you have enough money and en- enough dedication, a uh, time of like a span of five years mm-hmm. will reach you to a professional mm-hmm. level in Asia and South Asia. Okay. What is enough money? When I say enough money, mm-hmm. like uh, you can play basketball with mm-hmm. your own talent. Like. Mm-hmm. Bodybuilding is not about talent. So what you have to do when you build muscles is like, you know, like, protein is <laughs> one of the most important things. Like. Mm-hmm. So where we get protein? Like, from protein shakes, from chicken, from beef, so the amount of chicken and protein shake we take, la, mm. that will cost you not less than thirty thousand to forty thousand a month. La. A month. Yes, la. If you to, uh, if you calculate it uh, approximately, mm. the minimum you'll have to take is about thirty thousand. Not mm. just the protein, but 
when you uh, calculate everything what like the sub health supplements carbohydrate protein vitamins you know water mm-hmm. and then uh, many other okay. uh, supplements so in other words yeah. it is not a poor man's sport definitely la. to be a, in a competitive level it at is at a professional not. level yes la. at a professional and a competitive level yes that is that is true true but anybody can uh, join a bodybuilding club and then yes uh, uh-huh. generally uh-huh. let's not uh, say like about bodybuilding i'll say like fitness la. Uh-huh. fitness is for everyone uh-huh. be it any sports cycling athletic any sports fitness and weight training is very important uh-huh. But when you say great fitness and bodybuilding, so bodybuilding is different. La. Like I said, when you enter a competitive level, which we call it performance level, is completely different from regular mm-hmm. fitness. La. For for fitness, like anybody can join, mm-hmm. and which is very important la, for all human beings. Why is that? These days, like uh, we all see, la, mm-hmm. many uh, patients they go to hospital, mm-hmm. and the, it's all about lifestyle diseases. Mm-hmm. diseases like uh, blood pressure high blood mm-hmm. pressure mm-hmm. and uh, diabetic patient you know mm-hmm. these and obesity mm-hmm. and also uh, bone diseases la. these are all because of uh, lifestyle mm-hmm. unhealthy lifestyle you know la. so if you join a gym or even if you can't join a gym just start like uh, with uh, a morning walk or evening walk for about 45 to 1 hour mm-hmm. so that is fitness mm-hmm. that will make you stay away from these kind of lifestyle diseases so, so what happens uh, when you walk or when you play to the body less when you walk and play what happens is the blood pressure mm-hmm. it uh, uh, usually controls your blood pressure and sugar level why mm-hmm. because when you walk out or when you walk la, when you do mm-hmm. cardiovascular what happens is Now I'm not a doctor, la, but still. No, no. In, in terms my, of yeah, living healthy. Yes, la, from like w- no, from what I learned la, during my fitness course is that mm-hmm. we tend to uh, develop uh, ha- uh, heart muscles, mm-hmm. la, which will uh, we know la, when we develop heart muscle, what happens is uh, the heart pumps slowly, la, mm-hmm. you know, la, that way it controls your blood pressure. La. Mm-hmm. So that's what I learned, and also like uh, when you <coughs> start uh, weight training mm-hmm. and when you. start cardiovascular t- trainings la mm-hmm. then your sugar level also it comes to normal mm-hmm. so that's how they say like you stay fit mm-hmm. you know like, that's what i learned la. so you you what you're trying to say is you have to burn the calories that you have inside or the food uh, that you consume plus uh, you shouldn't let it turn into fat or yes. something like that like when i say obesity when mm-hmm. i told uh, that that time i mm-hmm. said obesity like mm-hmm. one of lifestyle diseases mm-hmm. is like uh, having too much of fat in your body mm. so uh, the only way to burn uh, your fat or mm. reduce fat is to burn ca- burn more calories mm. la. the calorie you take like the, the calorie intake what you mm. eat la, and the amount of calorie you burn mm. these two ha- these two has to match mm. the calorie you burn has to be more than what you take la, to reduce fat so now if i tell you scientifically whatever uh, we learned during our fitness courses like in a week The healthy way to lose fat is 1 kg. Mm. So to lose 1 kg of fat, you have to burn exactly 7500 calories mm-hmm. in a week. So that is the healthy way. So how do you burn the 7500 calories is in each day you have to burn at least not less than 1000 calories. Mm. I hope you understand what I mean. So when you put that 1000 calories, let's say let's turn that into a chicken. How much of a chicken one has to eat or how much of a rice? Or? Let's chicken like we say like chicken is protein mm-hmm. you have to exactly divide the amount of mm-hmm. carbohydrate mm-hmm. protein and fat mm-hmm. when i say fat these are good fats la mm-hmm. not the bad like monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats la. not the saturated fats or trans fat so these are the three main components which is very important for your body so carbohydrate you have to take like not more than 60% uh 55 to 60% la, for a normal average uh, uh, average athlete uh, person la. and uh, protein should not exceed more than 20% la, and the rest of the person should be from mm-hmm. uh, good fats la. Mm-hmm. so now you have to exactly divide this into mm-hmm. calories and 1 gram of carbohydrate and protein is about 4 calories and 1 gram of fat is about 9 calories la. Mm-hmm. so that's how you have to take out percentage and calculate so mm-hmm. i cannot exactly say right now mm-hmm. that you have to eat just to give a rough picture If I like 
let's say myself like mm. as an example mm-hmm. uh, the amount of chicken i take is uh, about nine pieces of uh, chicken breast mm-hmm. in a deal mm-hmm. in a day mm-hmm. so i take about four solid meals let's mm-hmm. say two chicken breasts a day mm-hmm. i mean like in a meal so total i take about nine chicken breasts mm-hmm. So which will be about uh, maybe around uh, about 800 calories okay. from okay. just from protein. Yeah. Okay. So it was n- it's not just about you know lifting a weight, but now you have to undergo a course where you understand food and your human body. Uh, that's what I got it. That's very good question, uh. And we always uh, this is our famous dialogue in the gym also, uh-huh. Whenever we say like. We always even I, I write this on my Facebook also uh-huh. that muscles are not made in the gym uh-huh. is made in the kitchen. Kitchen. No. So diet is very important. Uh-huh. Very very important compon- important component for growth of muscles. Uh-huh. Without diet, no matter how hard you work out in the gym, uh-huh. you'll be burning a lot of calories, you'll be tearing muscles, but to repair it, regenerate and the growth of muscles uh-huh. all from the diet. Uh-huh. So you need to take enough diet, enough protein uh-huh. to repair these muscles and regenerate and grow. Mm. For That's energy you need carbohydrate. Source of energy is carbohydrate. And fat as an insulin in your body and also fat is very important. A good mm. fat for your body. So other thing is that what I know is when you went to Macau in the past you had participated in a heavyweight and then you had to reduce your weight within a certain period of time. How did you do that? Yes. Actually, it wasn't uh, it wasn't heavyweight la. Yeah, I was around eighty eight point five kgs when I competed in Mr. Bhutan la, mm-hmm. championship, and uh, Mr. Bhutan was not my main focus la. Actually, I, I always I always focused for this Asian championship, which mm-hmm. was two months after my uh, uh, national, national championship la. Championship. So what happened was uh, in uh, Mr. Bhutan championship, I was just ready, not so. Uh, ripped la. Mm. because uh, if I be ripped during Mr. Bhutan I have two more months I will have tough time maintaining that la. so I just came as okay a fat person which is about 10 la, mm. during Mr. Bhutan but after Mr. Bhutan when I went to Macau I made my fat person below 2.5 la. that was the amount of fat oh. person and uh, my competition weight was 79 kgs la. Mm-hmm. So, so you had to burn more than one yes, kg. Yes, because uh, you know like what happened was uh, I was uh, I, I competed in athletic physique, not mm-hmm. in bodybuilding la, mm-hmm. category. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there's two categories, mm-hmm. different categories in this championship. La. Mm-hmm. One is bodybuilding, after that is mm-hmm. athletic physique, mm-hmm. and one is fitness physique. So mm-hmm. I competed in athletic physique, where I had to match that weight. La. My weight should not be more than eighty-one kg. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had to really work hard, mm-hmm. do more cardio. I did like about three and a half hours of cardio in a day la, mm-hmm. to reduce uh, my fat uh, from my body. And also, I think I lost a few, few pounds of muscles la, because yeah. of extreme cardio. Okay. And uh, now you have a bro- bronze medal at an at a, at a Asia le- Asian label and you're not stopping there, right? Uh, definitely not. La. Mm-hmm. Now, from Asian championship, we have a world championship. La. And... Uh, <laughs> bronze medal is n- just not the limit. La. Uh-huh. You have after that silver, you have gold. Uh-huh. La. And also now my next championship is World Championship, which is on uh, 5th of December. Uh-huh. And I'm preparing for that. Uh-huh. And uh, I hope that uh, I can do well. But uh-huh. I'm not so confident la, because uh-huh. the level is quite high. Uh-huh. And I just got a bronze medal. Uh-huh. If I had got gold medal, then I could say like, I would uh-huh. be a little bit confident that uh-huh. I might land up in top five or something like that. La. But... Uh-huh. I'm not that confident, but uh, I feel I'll do well. But you were confident when you went to Macau? Well, when I went to Macau, I was really confident with my body mm-hmm. because that was the best form of my body in my mm-hmm. whole life. Mm-hmm. So I was quite confident. Mm-hmm. So, Sange, thank you very much for talking to us and please continue to make us proud. And we wish you well for your next sixth world championship, bodybuilding championship. And uh, this has been a radio on TV with Sangeet Sultrim. I'm Ashok Tirwa. Thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye.